My name is Karen, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Procreate app on your iPad from scratch. Procreate is an iPad app that lets you be creative anytime, wherever you are. You can use it for drawing or painting or lettering, and the options are truly endless. You can use Procreate to create extremely detailed and advanced artwork, but it's also perfect for beginners because it is so intuitive to use. I've been using Procreate for over five years for lettering and art, and I've been obsessed with making Procreate brushes, practice sheets, and tutorials that help you be more creative with your iPad. Let's jump right in and let's talk about the best devices to use with Procreate. The dream team for using Procreate is that 12.9 inch iPad Pro and Apple Pencil, but there's definitely other options for you too. You can draw in Procreate with your finger or a third party stylus, but no other tool matches the responsiveness and control of the Apple Pencil. The Apple Pencil works with all new iPads. You just need to make sure that you get the right version of the Apple Pencil for the iPad you choose. I recommend getting the largest screen size you can afford. I personally use the 12.9 inch iPad Pro because I love having the large area to work on. If you don't quite have the budget for an iPad Pro, then that fourth generation iPad Air is a great option too. It's nearly identical to the iPad Pro in terms of performance when working with Procreate and if you would like to see it in more detail, make sure to watch my review video where I'm comparing it to the iPad Pro. But having said that, even the iPad mini or the eighth generation iPad will work really nicely with Procreate. I also highly recommend getting a matte screen protector for your iPad because the glass screen of the iPad can feel a little bit slippery. So the matte screen protector is going to give you a nice smooth feeling when you draw. I personally very much like the paper-like screen protectors. But now let's start the tutorial. This is pretty much a crash course of how to use the Procreate app. You'll learn the basics, tips and tricks, and everything you need to know to get started as quickly as possible. The gallery view is the first thing you'll see when you open up Procreate. Here you can browse and open all of your artwork as well as start new pieces. Tap the plus sign to create a new canvas. You'll see a variety of canvas size templates, but you can also create your own. I recommend setting up a high resolution canvas when you work in Procreate so that you have the option to print your artwork later on if you would like to. Let's create a canvas that is 5,000 pixels high and then 3,600 pixels wide. It's a good size that fills the whole screen and you still have plenty of layers to work with. The number of layers you have depends on your iPad. If you have a piece of art that you know you want to print on a specific size, then you also have the option to set up your canvas in millimeters or inches here as well. But in most cases, pixels are fine. Tap create and then it'll open up your new canvas. One of the things you'll notice is that I'm using the light interface. If you prefer the dark interface, you can change it by tapping on the spanner icon, then go to preferences and then turn the toggle for the dark interface on or off. The reason why I prefer the light interface for my tutorials is because it prevents the screen glare. If you're left-handed, you might like to turn on that right-hand interface. So you can turn that on and then you can see the sliders here are going to be on that right-hand side of the screen. Procreate has a large number of gestures that you can look at, but I have most of them set to the default option. One of the options I recommend you change is the touch actions, which means you can only draw with the Apple Pencil, but it prevents accidental strokes by touching the screen with your hands. Procreate is actually really good at palm rejection, so you can comfortably rest your hand on the screen while drawing, even with this option turned off, but I never draw with my fingers, so I don't need it. Tap the paintbrush icon in the menu bar to access the brushes panel. Procreate comes with a large collection of pre-installed brushes covering a range of mediums and styles. But what's really cool about Procreate is that you can install or even create your own custom brushes. If you tap on a brush, you'll see that each brush has dozens of settings that manipulate the characteristics of each brush. You don't need to worry about these settings right now, but I just wanted to show you so that you know that 
that these are here. You can create new sets and you can move brushes between sets so that you have all your favorite brushes right at your fingertips. Each brush has different abilities and I very much recommend that you experiment with different levels of pressure, the speed of your strokes as well as the tilt of your Apple Pencil to see what different effect each brush can produce. The sliders on the left here allow you to change the size of the brush and then also the opacity here. You can use two fingers to zoom in or out and also to rotate the canvas. My favorite feature of Procreate is the two finger tap undo. If you make a mistake, simply two finger tap anywhere on the canvas. If there's quite a few strokes you want to undo, tap with two fingers and hold to invoke that rapid undo function. You can tap with three fingers to redo and then tap and hold to redo multiple. Another cool feature is that you can scrub back and forth with three fingers to clear the whole screen. Now let's look at the eraser tool. The first thing you'll notice is that it has the same brushes as in the brushes panel. This means that you can use the same brush to paint and erase, which makes a big difference when you work with textured brushes. Let's color in a portion of the screen and then long tap the eraser tool to select the same brush. And now you'll see how you can erase parts of your painting without losing the textured edges. The little finger icon here is the smudge tool. You can use it to blend, smear or combine brush strokes. And again, you can use all the brushes that you have in the brushes and eraser panels. Use the opacity slider to determine the strength of your smudging to create nice smooth transitions. And then over here in the top right corner, we have the colors. Tap the color swatch to bring up the color picker. Use the outer ring to select the hue and then the inner circle to fine tune the lightness, the darkness or the saturation of the color. You can drag the handle of the color picker to make it float and make it very easy to quickly change the color while you are painting. Tap and hold on the screen to invoke the eyedropper. This lets you easily select the color that is already on the canvas. Now let's put the color wheel back into its place and let's have a look at that color palettes. Tap on that color palette icon here. Create a new palette creates an empty palette that you can populate yourself with your favorite colors. You can reorder the colors by long pressing the color swatch and then dragging it into a new spot. New from camera is a super cool option to create a color palette by pointing your iPad camera at an object and then you get a live preview of that color palette. You can also create a new palette from a photo either by selecting it from the photos app or by dragging it directly into the palette like this. Let's look at the layers panel next by tapping on that layer icon here. Layers are very powerful and one of the most useful features of Procreate. At the bottom is the background color and by default it is white, but you can tap on it to select any color as your background. Tap the layer thumbnail to access that layer flyout menu, which is giving you all these additional layer options. Let's tap clear to start fresh. Let's select black and create a rectangular shape. You can fill this area with color quickly by dragging that color circle into the shape. Make sure that your shape is completely closed, otherwise you'll fill the whole screen. Now let's create a new layer and create another rectangle. Let's fill it with that same color. You might also like to adjust the shape by selecting one of the transform tools. Try the different options to see how you can change the shape of your drawing. Once you're happy, tap the arrow tool to unselect the shape. Go to the layer menu and then duplicate that shape. <laughs> and by now you can probably see what we are drawing. Now move the legs behind the body by dragging the layer to the bottom of that stack like this. You can see now how this has placed the shape shapes behind the body shape. So any layer that is on top is always at the front and then the layers that are further down the stack are going to be in the background. Use the eraser tool to erase parts of the body and then paint some back if you've erased too much. Now this looks good and we can merge the layers. Open the layers panel and pinch the layers together to merge them. Sometimes this can be a little bit hard, so you can also tap on the layer thumbnail and then select merge down instead. I also want to show you how to reorder the layers in the layers panel and the effect it has on the appearance of your shape. 
Let's draw the oxygen tank and fill it with purple, but now we want it to appear behind the body. Open up the layers panel and then move the layer below the body and then it gets partially hidden like this. Layers that are higher up take precedence over the lower layer, so if you need to bring something to the front, then you can just drag it to the top of your layers panel. Next up, we are going to draw the mask and I'm going to show you how to use the quick shape tool. You can draw lines, rectangles, circles and polyline shapes by holding your Apple Pencil on the screen until the shape forms a quick line. Then go to edit shape and rearrange the shape until you're happy with it. For the mask, we are going to draw an ellipse and then use the warp tool to amend the shape. Now, instead of filling the shape with a color, I want to show you how to use the reference function. This is a great feature to color in your line art. Open the layers panel and tap on the layer thumbnail, then select reference. Create a new layer and fill the shape by dragging and dropping the color swatch onto it. The nice thing about doing this is that you can now adjust the fill color independently of your line color. Recoloring shapes is really easy. If you know the exact color you want, you can alpha lock that layer and then fill it with a new color. Alpha lock means that you can only paint on the pixels that already have a color. You can drag to the right on your layers panel to invoke the alpha lock, or you can also tap on the layer thumbnail to invoke alpha lock like this. If you are not sure exactly what color you want, I recommend to use that hue saturation and brightness adjustment. Let's tap on the magic wand icon and let's have a look at all the adjustment options we have in Procreate. That top group here is to adjust all the colors of your artwork. The next group allows you to apply a blur. That third group is to adjust the textures. And then that bottom group here is used to adjust the shape of your artwork. My favorite adjustment is definitely that hue, saturation and brightness <laughs> and I use it all the time. Tapping on the menu items allows you to choose between layer and pencil. Selecting layer will apply the adjustment to the whole layer and selecting pencil allows you to paint in the adjustment with your Apple Pencil. In most cases, you want to select layer, which is what we are going to do now. Adjust the sliders to dial in exactly the color that you want. And then tap the magic wand icon again to lock them in. Now we want to draw in the body highlight. Create a new layer above the body layer and draw the shape of the highlight with white. Now we are going to look at the next powerful Procreate feature, which is opacity and blend modes. Open up the layers panel and tap on the end. Change the opacity slider to make your shape more transparent so that the layer below becomes visible. Another thing you can do is change the blend mode. Let's turn the opacity back to 100% and then change the blend mode to soft light. Definitely try some of the other blend modes as well to see what effects you can achieve with this. Now let's group that body shapes by swiping to the right and then selecting group here at the top of the layer panel. Now you can move and transform all the layers inside your group at the same time. Okay, now back to the mask. Let's create some highlights here as well. And let me show you another cool feature. We are going to draw the highlights here and it's kind of difficult to exactly match the edge of your line here, but it's very easy to fix. All you have to do is turn on that clipping mask feature and then it will clip the contents of this layer to the shape of the layer below. I use this feature all the time when coloring in my lettering pieces. Our crewmate needs a hat, of course, as well. And I really like the little fried egg. Draw the outline of the egg and then let's use the liquefied tool to adjust the shape. The liquefied tool has a number of different modes and it's super fun to play with. Definitely try them all out. You'll probably find the push mode most useful for this but definitely try the edge mode too. And then let's give our crewmate a little shadow too. Select the soft airbrush and draw a line. Then go to the adjustments and use the Gaussian blue to Tool in layer mode to create a soft blur. Make the shadow a bit narrower using the transform tool and then decrease the opacity a little bit too. Next up, we are going to create a galaxy background. Let's create an ellipse and fill it and then paint a white nebula with that nebula brush that's in the luminance brush set. Let's also use some of these stars that we painted earlier. Duplicate the layer a few times and then distribute the stars on the background. If you don't have the stars on a separate 
separate layer, then it's not a problem. You can use that selection tool and draw a circle around some of the shapes and then move them with the arrow tool until they are in the right place. Once you're happy with your artwork, it's time to export it. Tap on that spanner icon and then tap share. And you can see that we've got a number of export formats available here. The most common option is probably JPEG. You can also select PSD, which will keep your layers intact and it's useful if you want to carry on working on this artwork on your computer. And then you also have the PNG option which can create a transparent background and I'm going to show you how this works now. So if you don't want that white background you can now go into your layers panel and then you can deselect that background color and you can see here it's still got the frame but the background is transparent now. And then in that case you want to select that PNG option. Now let's go to that gallery and then I want to show you some other options. You can name this file by tapping on that layer. So now it's called Untitled Artwork, but we want to call this Among Us Purple. And then what you can do as well is create stacks. You can see I've got a number of stacks here already. So you tap on Select and then you tap on the artwork that you want to stack and then click on Stack, which will group the stacks nicely. And now you can name this stack as well. So this is going to be called Procreate tutorial. I really hope you found this tutorial useful and I really hope you got all excited about using Procreate for your drawing, painting and lettering. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and then I'm also going to bloop up another couple of videos with Procreate 5x features so you can keep watching and you can keep learning those as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.